This video is about two additional special discrete random variables. We know for some discrete random variables, they have very special distributions. They have they even get their own names. And to know the distributions of discrete random variables, we know it's enough to learn their PMF functions. What is the PMF? The PMF function is a function specifying specify all the probability values of such event, event generated by random variable x of the type x equal to small x with the small x coming from the support, coming from the support of the discrete random variable x. So in the following we're going to discuss two discrete random variables and we also specify their PMF. And besides we also discuss some additional properties. Let's take a look at the first one, negative binomial. Consider this random event. Consider this random experiment. So we're going to keep throwing a special call until we have r hat. So we don't stop until we have r hat. And let x now denote the number of tails we have. So not here we are not counting the number of heads, but we are, going, we are going to count the number of bottoms. If x denote the number of tails in this type of random uh, experiment, we see x follows negative binomial distribution with parameter r. Here r denotes the fixed number of hearts we uh, of the heads we require with successful red p. Uh, the p here is the probability value of getting head in each flip, right? So it's either head or bottom, and each time uh, is the, the probability of getting a hat is equal to p. You can pause the video at this moment and try to find out the PMF function of x. The PMF function of x here, to specify the PMF function, we only need to specify the probability value of x equal to n. Here, n could be 0, 1, right? When n equals 0, when x equals 0, that means we immediately get our heads. We didn't have any bottoms. It could also be 1, be 2, right? Let's suppose x equal to n. That means we're going to have n bottoms before we get totally r heads. So in total, we're going to have n plus r throws. For each of such outcomes, we know the probability is p to the power r because we have r hats and 1 minus p to the power n because we have n bottoms. And how many of these outcomes? We know the last one is always hat, uh, the, right? The last one is always hat. And then we stop. Then we need to figure out what happens to the first, the remaining positions. There are still n plus r minus 1 flips before the final, final hat. And among those, we have to figure out r minus one positions. Those has to be the uh, those has to be has, right? So for each ordering of the outcome, for each possible outcome is p to the power r times one minus p to the power n. And how many outcomes we have in total is this number. So together. This is the probability of x equal to n. Right? Because it equals the summation of, for example, uh, outcomes like this way. Uh, we have hat, hat, hat. Suppose this is r hat union with, uh, and before the r hat, we should have. So it contains, for example, let's see, we have bot tails, bottoms, uh, n tails, and then we have r hats. It could also be the case that we have a hat to start with, and then we have n tails, and then we have r minus 1 has, right? And we can keep going. 
for each of these outcomes, we have probability of this one. And they all have the same value here. And how many different outcomes we have in total? That would be this number. So we sum them all together. That gives the probability value of x equal to n. If we stop until we get one hat, that is the uh, so negative binomial distributed random variable with one and a successful rate p. This is called a ge geometric distribution with successful rate p, which they know the number of bottoms before the first hat. Now the question is, suppose we have a random variable follows uh, which follow z, it follows negative binomial distribution with parameter r and p. What is the expected value of z and what is its variance? You can pause the video at this moment and try to figure it out yourself. Well, if you try to calculate everything by definition, given we already learned the PMI function, that's doable, right? We already know the PMI function here. But it's a lot of calculations. Do we have an easier way to cal calculate the expectation of that and variance of that? Fortunately, for this case, we do. We're going to apply the techniques by decomposing the that as a summation of IID random variables. And then all calculations uh, will be much easier. So consider this case. Denote y1 the number of bottoms before the first hat, y2 denote the number of bottoms after the first hat and before the second hat. Okay, so now we have y1 of bottoms. Then we have a hat, and then we start everything again, y2, and then we have a hat, then we stop. And then we start again, y3, and we can keep going. Apparently, we have y1 and y2, and y3, they will be independent from each other because we just keep throwing the coins, and what happens uh, in previous throws, they won't affect what happens later on, right? And vice versa. So y1, y2, y3 keep going, they are independent. And note here, the distribution also identical, right? Because for each yi, we can consider this is a new game, and we, we stop that game until we have a hat. So each of them will follow identical distribution, which is the geometric distribution, and they, they are independent from each other. yi follows geometric distribution, successful rate p and they are id if we sum r of them together that basically means how many bottoms we have until we have r hats right so if it denote x as the summation of y1 plus y2 until plus y r x will follows a negative binomial distribution with parameter r and successful rate p Okay, now we have ID summation here. It's easier to calculate expectation and variance, right? According to the linearity of the expectation, we know expected value of X will be equal to the summation here because it's a um, finite sum and suppose all the expectation exists and, and they do here. So we can interchange the summation and its expectation position. So let's take a look here. Expectation of x is equal to the expectation of the summation, right? If the expectation is well defined, we can interchange the position of the summation and the expectation function, which gives this one, right? According to the, according to the linearity of the expectation. And note here, x and that, they follow identical distribution, so we know distribution determines uh, expectations, so expected value of that is equal to expected value of x, because they follow identical distribution. They are both negatively, uh, negative binomial distributed. Okay, what's remaining is to calculate the expectation of yi. 
which is uh, much simpler to compare, compare uh, uh, calculate, compare with the calculation of calculate expectation of Z directly. So this is calculate the expectation of YI by definition. And given all YI, they have identical distributions. So how many of them we have in total? We have R together. So R times the individual expected value. So the expectation of that is equal to R times 1 minus P over P. Now the question is, how do we calculate the variance? Well, luckily here we have independent summation. So all YIs, they are independent from each other. Therefore, it's easy to calculate the variance according to the property of variance. The variance of that is still go, going to be equal to the variance of X because they have identical distribution. And the variance will also be the same right? because the distribution determines the uh, expectation and distribution of that also uh, determine the distribution of, well, let's go in this way, because the variance by definition is essentially uh, a one expectation of functions of that, right? And functions of these. So if that have exactly the same distribution of X, then their variance it's also the same because distributions determine the distribution of this function of random variable and also determines the value of expectation of this function of random variable. They have the same distribution, they also have the same variance here. Now, how do we calculate the variance of X? Luckily here we have independent summation and according to the property of variance, we know variance of the summation of independent variable is the summation of the individual variance. So if we calculate the variance of the summation, first, if this variance exists, and second, if each individual variance also exists, and each yi, they are independent from each other, then this one can be written as the summation of individual variance. And next, we only need to calculate the variance of yi. And the calculation is uh, slightly complicated, but still doable. So this is the calculation steps. Making use the, of known properties of the summation of infinite series of such type, we know it's equal to this value. And this is the expectation of yi to the power two for the ver to calculate the variance of yi, we know we can apply this calculation. Instead of working with the definition directly, we know variance of yi also equal to the difference of expected value of yi to the power 2 minus its average to the power 2. Well, we use this property because we have already calculated the average and the difference you can uh, plug in here. So will be this value minus this value to the power two, right? Which delivers this. And how many uh, of this we're gonna sum all together? We have R of them together. So the variance of X, which is also equal to the variance of that, will be R times the individual uh, variance. They are equal to each other. The individual uh, variance, variance of YI, they are equal to each other because they have identical distribution. Okay. Each yi, they have identical distribution. How many of them we're going to sum all together? We have r of them. Okay. This is the first uh, distribution we discussed in this video. Let's take a look at the second one, negative hypergeometric. Well, following the similar logic, here we're going to keep marking balls with stars from an urn uh, with W white balls and B black balls. Each ball is equally likely to be marked. We, didn't, we don't stop until there are R white balls with marks. Right? We keep marking until we have R white balls with marks. And now let X denote the number of balls being both black and marked with stars. 
if x denotes this number, then x follows negative uh, hypergeometric distribution with parameter wbr. So here w denotes the number of white balls, b is the number of black balls, and we, didn't, we don't stop until we have r white balls with marks, right? We keep marking. And x and x denotes the number of balls being both black and marked with stars. I can pause the video at this moment. I try to figure out what is the PMF function of x. Well, the PMF function of x is calculated or can be calculated in this way. Suppose x equal to k. That basically means we have, uh, well, because we didn't stop until we have our white balls with marks, and now x equal to k, so in total we have marked r plus k balls. And we know the last one, right? The last one is always uh, will be the white one, will be marked with, uh, is a marked ball with white. So we have to choose to be able to pick a white ball here. And how many white balls remaining? That's the number of white balls remaining here. And uh, how many balls remains in total before we draw the last balls? That's W plus B minus R. And here we already right W equal K and N plus one. Because before the final draw, we have already draw R plus one, uh, R minus one plus K, right? Minus those total number minus those, this gives this uh, denominator. So this is the last draw. And uh, what happens in previous draws? Well, the last one we know is always, uh, is always a white ball. And before that, we have already drawn K black balls and R minus one white balls. So first we need to draw how many total possible draws of that? We draw r plus k minus one balls, and k of them need to be black, r minus one of them need to be white. So this is the first portion of the balls, and this is the last row. And together, they form up the probability of x, uh, probability value of x equal to k. Now, let's consider this question. If we have that follows negative uh, hypergeometric distribution with parameter values WBR, what is the expected value of that? So we're going to keep marking balls if, until we have R, white balls marked with uh, stars. Then what is the number of balls that we, uh, we, that's been both black and marked with stars? What is the expectation of that? You can pause the video at this moment. I try to figure out how you would to calculate this value. Well, of course, given we have already specified the PMF function of x, we know we can calculate by definition, right? But look at this formula. It's very hard to calculate again. So do we have an easier way to calculate the expected value? And yes, we do. And this time, we're going to make use of indicator functions. Right. Let's think about the underlying sample space. The underlying sample space contains outcomes such as BBB, which they know the uh, black balls, and WW, BW, and we can list all possible, uh, we can list the order of all balls, right? So such outcome. Of course, we only care what happens before, what happens uh, with, for example, we only care about uh, what ha what happens before our white balls, right? And what happens after, we don't care that much. But still, we can list the order of all balls, right? We just keep keep drawing. Even though the experiments start, stop, we can still keep drawing, and we just order all possible, uh, order the, all the balls. And note here, for each black ball, it can choose W plus one positions with equal likeliness, right? It could choose before the first white ball, 
or choose between the first and second white ball between the uh, second and third white balls. Of course, only the black balls, uh, they will only contribute to the, to the that, to the, well, only the black ball will only be counted before they, if they choose any positions before the earth white balls. But there are W plus one positions in total. And for each black balls, well, they can choose each position with equal likeliness. So let's denote, let's label all black balls from one to B and denote IJ the indicator random variable and it, it equals one if the black ball J chooses, chooses any positions before the R white ball, otherwise zero. And given the black balls are choosing each position with equal, equal likeliness, we know the expected value of IJ will be R over W plus one. So it only equals one if the black ball J choose any, uh, chooses any position before the earth white ball, otherwise it's zero. Now, what is the summation of such IJ? If we sum all indicator, ve ve uh, indicator random variables together from one to B, and note this X, the summation will follow negative hyper, geometric distribution. Why? Because think about how do we define the indicator function. So x denotes the number of black balls being picked up before the R's uh, being marked before the R's white ball, right? And this is exactly the same number. If X maps any outcomes to N, for example, there will be N black balls marked with stars. That will mean, well, there will be also N random uh, indicator random variables that are equal to one and the rest equal to zero, right? Because there, that means when X is equal to N, that means there are N black balls choosing positions before the earth white ball. So on both sides, they denote exactly the same number. Now the summation of this indicator function, well, this is X follows exactly the same distribution as the negative hypergeometric distribution with parameter WBR. So we know the expectation of X is equal to the expected value of that according to the linearity of expectation operator, we know if they exist, we can, uh, if the expectation exists, apparently it exists here, it's a summation of bounded finite terms. According to the linearity, the expectation of X, which is the expectation of this summation can be written as the summation of the expected value of IJ. And we have already calculated the expected value of IJ and for each IJ apparently by symmetry, they follow the same distribution and the expectation gives the same number. And how many uh, such expectation we're gonna sum together, how many numbers uh, of, how many this number we're gonna sum uh, all together, we have B of B times R over W plus one. So this is the expected value of that. Indeed, by working with indicator function here, we find a simple way to calculate the expected value of that. But note here, these indicator functions, even though they have identical distributions, they are not independent from each other. It's because if we know what happens, if we know we have already drawn some black balls, that's gonna affect our understanding of the property values of later, uh, what happens in later draws, right? So they are not independent. Therefore, if you want to calculate the variance, well, we have to follow the definition then. The calculation is not 
that uh, straightforward anymore. But you can try to figure out is there any easier way to calculate the variance of this debt. Okay, so in this video we discuss this, uh, we discuss two discrete random variables and hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for watching this.